started off by saying uh, something different, which was that well, this is, the, is, 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 is a freedom of speech. I'm not capable of sake tea at all, um, Douglas. Why don't you just listen? Uh, Why don't you, you listen to my words uh, instead of saying, your I first disagree point, with that? Your first point, such as it was, was that Osama bin Laden uh, uh, would be the obvious equivalent to make this. I don't think that is an obvious equivalent to make You are about to see Douglas Murray educate a British Muslim journalist on culture and free speech. Douglas Murray lays down an argument for neoconservatism and exposes Islamists for their double standards. Douglas Murray has been warning us of this for years. Douglas Murray did not hold back. What, is, what does it mean to be to the be only neocon. neocon in town or whatever? <laughs> in the village. <laughs> in the, village. Uh, <laughs> the only neocon in the village, this is true. Um, uh, look, um, uh, being a neocon is... Uh, That's Michael Gove, he's another one. He's another, yeah, yeah, there are, there are no, small no, coterie, no. there are small coterie, and, and more and more are coming out from the left, uh, we notice, Andrew yes. Anthony, and so on. So look, um, uh, being a neoconservative He'll be very upset you said that. Uh, I didn't yeah, say well. <laughs> um, Being a, a neoconservative isn't, uh, uh, isn't a very uh, fashionable thing to be these days, you will have noticed, young women. Uh, but uh, it's not a political group, it's not a uh, movement or anything else. All it is is a way of looking at the world. And that way of looking at the world was identified many years ago by one of the sort of forefathers of neoconservatism, Irving Kristol, who defined neocons as being liberals who'd be mugged by reality. And I would say that that fitted my own view of the world fairly well, is that I have, uh, believe it or not, uh, Yasmin, a, uh, a liberal outlook on the world. Uh, but I think that reality does mug you and has done so repeatedly in recent years. Uh, that's the perspective I come oh, from. Those are the glasses I wear. Uh, I think in the same way it's mugged a lot of people, which is that they see that liberalism is a good thing and worth defending, but does not defend itself. Which liberalism? Uh, classical so liberalism. Many. I mean classical liberalism. I mean the freedom of the individual and so on, which you must admit, to some extent, uh, is under threat at the moment from all sorts of directions. But one of them, uh, and uh, we can at least agree on this, one of them is... Why do you want to agree with to me or make me agree with you? It's very good that I'm we don't agree. Would you, well, would you do I'm your sure shaving paid for this interview? No, I'm Are you being paid for it? I'm not being paid for it. It's my job to work here. Would you uh, do um, your job? No, I'm enjoying the spectacle. So are you on his side? Uh, uh, have you got questions? I'm sort of, uh, we haven't actually let him, or you haven't let him, should I say, Sorry. expound the theory of neoconservatism. Should we let him do that mm -hmm. before we interrupt him? Um, as I was saying, there isn't a theory. It's just a way of looking at the world. It's an attitude. Like some people are instinctively conservative, um, some people are instinctively small government conservative, some people are um, conservatives who are sort of anarchist Tories, um, that's a one, one view of the world, uh, then there are all the multiple views of the left. Uh, Neoconservatism is just another way of looking at the world. And you believe in freedom of expression? Yeah, very much so. So you wouldn't mind if we had Osama, Osama bin Laden here on the programme? No, I at least know which address he was at. Douglas Murray engages in a thoughtful discussion about neoconservatism and the perceived threats to liberalism in the West, particularly focusing on the erosion of foundational values such as individual freedom and free speech. His commentary reflects a broader concern among neoconservatives and many classical liberals about the directions in which modern Western societies are moving. Murray argues that the essential tenets of Western civilization, most notably the freedom of the individual and the right to free speech, are increasingly being compromised or outright attacked. This perspective sees the rise of various forms of censorship, the encroachment of government regulations in personal lives, and the increasing influence of identity politics as direct threats to these foundation principles. He posits that these trends undermine the liberal democratic framework that has historically championed individual rights and freedoms. It's important to consider the context and implications of his views. For instance, recent surveys and studies provide evidence that concerns about the state of free speech and individual liberties are not unfounded. According to a 2021 report by Freedom House, global freedom has been on the decline for the past 15 years, with countries in the West experiencing setbacks in political rights and civil liberties, including encroachments on media freedom and public discourse. Other commentators and intellectuals have echoed Murray's concerns. Jordan Peterson, for instance, frequently discusses the impact of compelled speech and political correctness on academic and public life, arguing that they stifle the free exchange of ideas. Similarly, Writer and philosopher Sam Harris has raised concerns about the erosion of rational discourse and the dangers of moral relativism that can pervade unchecked in a highly polarized political climate. Critically, Murray and his contemporaries advocate for a reinvigoration of the values that they believe have been central to the success of Western societies. 
His includes a robust defense of free speech, not just as a legal right, but as a societal virtue that fosters debate and the search for truth. And you get exactly the same thing now. There are people from right and left who say, uh, if you lampoon someone's religion, make jokes about someone's religion, disrespect someone's religion, then you should have what's coming to you. And I don't believe that. Do you? What? No, I don't. There's but no I things don't, you'd have to But I don't agree with Douglas. No you see, they all build up this mad conspiracy. They're Hang on, who's mad they? conspiracy. Hang on, who's they? The, uh, the, the neocons that you've defined. They build up this mad conspiracy that the whole world militates against these, these pure values. I agree with you that, you well, know... Well, there are regimes that but do. But there are people who have look views. At, look, 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 some at people Burma, look at Burma, look at North Korea, look at Iran. Mr. Rushdie had done. There's no there freedom of speech in those countries, yeah, is there? Absolutely. No, so what, what point are you so, making? So they have a legitimate agenda to discuss these issues. I didn't ask them not to. But if they want to discuss that issue, they can't expect everybody to fall in line with their agenda. Well, I'm sure they don't. No, 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 because no, no, when you say Lord Dacre, he disagreed. He disagreed with what the majority of the people said. That was his right. He wasn't killing Rushdie. Uh, look, he didn't okay, take well, a I'll, I'll give you another, another example, perhaps cl closer to home, closer to our own day, which is Ter van Gogh, who, when he was uh, slaughtered on the streets of Amsterdam, um, and his colleague, uh, a great friend of mine, was uh, chased out of the country for making a film. Um, we had, uh, among other things, Index on Censorship in Britain that ran a very prominent editorial saying it was right to censor terror in that And that way. was wrong. And I'm saying that. That point of view, that was an extreme version of it. Mm -hmm. But that point of view is one I come across every day. I come across it not just among the Muslim community across Europe. I come across it from conservatives and others who think that it is permissible that if somebody deeply offends someone else's beliefs, they should have what's coming to them. And I disagree with that. Well, and I, I think if you that. are willing to, well, you see, you started off by saying uh, something different, which was that no, this is, the, is, is, a, is a freedom of speech. Are you not capable of sucky at all, um, Douglas? Why don't you just listen? Uh, Why don't you, you listen to my words uh, instead of saying, uh, your first I disagree point, with that? Your first point, such as it was, was that Osama bin Laden uh, uh, would be the obvious equivalent to make of this. I don't think that is an obvious equivalent to make of this. And I don't think there's a problem with showing Osama bin Laden uh, to, to, to the criticism of other people's religions. And I don't think that Osama bin Laden... I didn't say that at all. You, but you did no, say that I you said, didn't think that Osama bin Laden no, should be I shown. No, I really think you should listen you to what I'm saying. You did say that there were no, times you should I said there are him. limits to absolute freedom for me. Where do they land? I would never allow Nazis onto our television screens to say what they think about Jewish people. I just wouldn't. Douglas Murray is completely right on this one. People act like they believe in free speech up until someone makes fun of Islam and all hell breaks loose. We have to start challenging this narrative like Douglas Murray is doing before it's too late. Please let me know your thoughts on this in the comments.